In this video, I will try to orient you on how you can apply shortcuts during the board exam because it's very useful for these types of problems. Now don't be confused by all of these given because usually in the board exam, problems that may look like steel design would usually tackle structural theory or strength of materials. And so let's try to solve the first problem. Determine the value of P based on deflection. Let's first read our problem. A simply supported W350 by 90 girder, 8M long, carries a concentrated load P positioned at midpoint. The beam also carries a uniform dead load of 5 knm including its own weight and live load of 7.2 kN per meter. Use Fy equals 250 MPa and E equals 200 GPa. Now these values have specific meanings. Now you can learn that in your steel design. Now 350 would correspond to the beam's depth and then 90 would correspond to the beam's weight in kg per meter. However, we won't need this because it's already indicated here that the uniform dead load of 5 kn per m already includes its own weight. We will only include this one if this is not mentioned. Let's say this wasn't mentioned and so the beam's weight will become 5 kn per m and then plus 90 kg per m and we will convert this one into kn per m and so let's multiply that by 9.81 for this one to become newton and since this is in kn we will divide it by 1000 and so now you can convert this into kn per m and so the weight you will consider would be the sum of this one now again we don't need this because 5 kn per m already includes its own weight and so let's remove that now let's try to draw our figure the beam is 8 meters long and then it is simply supported now it carries a distributed load now this distributed load is equal to the weight of the beam plus the live load it carries and so plus 7.2 which is 12.2 kn per m and then again it carries a concentrated load p positioned at midpoint and so there will be a concentrated load p at the mid span now this is what we are looking for and we have different constraints According to our three problems, we need to find the value of P based on deflection and then based on flexure and based on shear. Now, in order to compute for the value of P based on deflection, we need to use the constraints. Now, I wasn't able to write the constraints beforehand and so I'll write that here. The allowable deflection is L over 360 and the allowable stresses are the following. For flexure, FB is equal to 0.66 FY and then for shear, FV is equal to 0.4 FY. And so for our first problem, we will need to base our calculations for this first constraint which is the allowable deflection. Now our beam will deflect this way and then the location of the maximum deflection will be at the mid span. Now we have two deflections to compute here. We need to get the deflection due to W and due to P. Now we have shortcut formulas for that. Due to a uniform load over the whole span, the deflection will be 5W L to the fourth over 384EI. This deflection is caused by this distributed load. And then due to P, the deflection will be PL cubed over 48EI. And so if we add both of these, we will get the maximum deflection. And we need to equate that to the allowable deflection. The allowable deflection is L over 360. And let's equate that to 5W L to the fourth over 384EI plus PL cubed over 48EI. Now our L is 8 meters. And so let's change that. 8 over 360 equals 5. Our W is 12.2 and then our L is 8 and that's to the power of 4 and then that's over 384 EI. Our E is 200 GPA and so let's convert that to MPA by multiplying this by 1000 and then our I is this value which is 266.4 times 10 to the 6 and so to make our units consistent let's multiply this by 1000 to the 4th so that we can convert this into NMM cube and since this is in meters Let's also convert this one. Let's multiply this by 1000 so that it will be in mm. And so now our units are consistent. And then let's add P times L which is 8 and then cube multiplied by 1000 to the 4th. Or you can write this as times 10 to the 12th. It's up to you. I'm just using this one so that you won't be confused with the units. And then that's over 48 EI. And so this will be 48. And then let's just copy this one. And so now we can solve for P based on deflection. Let's input this in our calculators and then let's solve for P. Now in order to streamline our process, let's just store the value of EI in our calculators. Now this is our EI and so let's store this one at A. And so if we will input this 
we will now be able to avoid typing this long expression. And so this will be 8 times 1000 over 360 equals 5 times 12.2 times 8 to the 4th times 10 to the 12. Because you can write this as this one. And then over 384, EI is stored in A. And so let's recall that value. This is EI. And then plus X times 8 cubed times 10 to the 12 over 48 times EI. And so now we can solve for X. That will be 50. So our P will be 50 KN based on deflection. And so this will be our answer. Now sir, how about for this question? Determine the value of P based on flexure. Now flexure corresponds to the maximum bending stress, which is FB. And that's equal to MC over I. Now we have a value for FB, which is this one. And so let's change FB. This will become 0.66 FY. Now sir, what is our M? The M is the maximum moment caused by P and W. Now as you can recall, the shortcut for the maximum deflection due to a uniformly distributed load is WL squared over 8. And then for a concentrated load at the midspan, that's PL over 4. This will be our maximum moment, which occurs at the midspan. And so let's just color this one, because this is our M. And then sir, how about our C? How are we going to compute that? Now these are the properties of our section. Now if it has W, it means that it is an I section. And so the form of the cross section will be this one. Now sir, what do you mean by D? D is the depth. And so this will be 350. Now sir, what is TW? TW is the thickness of the web. That's why this is W. Because it corresponds to the web. Now sir, what is the web? This part is the web. So TW will be the thickness of this one. Now sir, how about BF? BF is the width. Of the flange these are the flanges these two and so this will be BF and then TF corresponds to the thickness of the flange it will be this distance again this is the web and then these two are the flanges but we don't need all of these because we only need this one to compute for C which is the farthest distance from the neutral axis now the neutral axis of our beam section is at the center and so this will be our C now C is simply half of 350 and so let's write that here half of 350 and then over I we already have our I which is 266.4 times 10 to the power of 6 now our FY is in MPA and so that will be in N per mm squared and the value of our FY is 250 MPA and so let's change this one now the unit of the moment is KNM and so to make our units consistent because this is in mm to the fourth and this is in MPA, we will need to multiply this by 1000 squared. Now why? Because we are converting KN into N and M into MM. And so that's why we have to multiply by 1000 two times. But then you can write this one as 10 to the power of 6. And so let's input the values for this one. Again, our W is 12.2 and then our L is 8. And so let's type this in our calculators. 0 0.66 times 250 equals WL squared over 8 will become 12.2 times 8 squared over 8. And then plus P is our unknown times 8 over 4. And then times 350 over 2 times 10 to the 6th. And then 266.4 times 10 to the 6th. Let's press shift solve so that we can solve for P. And so that will give us 76.8. Now as you can notice, it's not in our choices. However, it's most likely that this is the correct answer. Because usually in the board exam, there are a lot of typographical errors. And so choose the value which you think is the correct answer. And then for the last question, we have to determine the value of P based on shear. Now the important concept here is that the maximum shear usually occurs at the supports. And so let's solve for the reaction at any of the supports. Now since our beam is symmetrical, that's easy to identify because the reaction will be half of P or P over 2 plus half of the resultant which is WL over 2. This is the resultant. Now this problem is based on the shear stress. Now we know that shear involves the area parallel to the load. However, in our steel design, we know that the only area subjected to shear is this one because these parts usually offer negligible resistance. And so now what is this area? The area of this orange portion is D, which is this one, times TW. And so our shear stress will be V, the force, over the area, which is this area, D times TW. Now our FV has a constraint. 
which is this one 0.4 fy and so let's change that into 0.4 fy and then that's equal to the maximum shear over d times tw our maximum shear is p over 2 plus wl over 2 and then that's over d times tw now our fy is 250 and then let's equate that to p over 2 plus our w is 12.2 and then our L is 8 and then over 2. Now let's multiply this by 1000 so that our units will be consistent because 250 is an M per mm squared because this is an MPA and then over D times TW. Our D is 350 and then our TW is this value. So this will be 10. And so now we can compute for P. That will be 0.4 times 250 equals X over 2 plus 12.2 times 8 over 2 times 1000 over 350 times 10. Press shift solve and then you will be able to get the value of P which is 602.4 and so this will be our answer.